previous videos, we've talked about how to calculate the number of moles of something when you're given a solution or when you're mixing multiple solutions together. In this video, we'll talk about how to calculate the number of moles of a gas in a container using the ideal gas law equation. You probably know that tire pressure changes at different temperatures. At lower temperatures, the pressure in your car's tires is lower compared to when it's warmer outside. For example, in a tire with a volume of 10.4 liters that's at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, the tire pressure can drop to 31 pounds per square inch, which is equal to 2.11 atmospheres. What if we wanted to find the number of moles of gas in this tire? The gas in tires is just compressed air, which is 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. Okay, there are some other gases, but there isn't that much of them. Let's take it one step at a time. What's the first thing we do when we want to find the number of moles of a species? That's right, the first step is always to draw a beaker. Well, in this case, we should draw a closed container. We don't want the gas to escape, but it's the same idea. Even though we're talking about gas in tires in this problem, we can draw a beaker to represent the tire. Now we want to calculate the number of moles of gas in our beaker. We will use the ideal gas law equation, P equals nRT over V, to help us. We know all of the variables except for n, the number of moles of gas, which is what we want to solve. Rather than using the equation as it is, it's helpful to rearrange it to equal the variable we're trying to find. How would you rearrange this equation to find n? That's right, we'll multiply both sides by v to get rid of the v in the denominator, and then divide both sides by r and t. That leaves the n variable alone on the right side of the equation. We have all of the variables needed to solve for the number of moles of gas in the tire. We need to figure out which value of r to use, though. Which value will we be using? We're given the pressure in units of atmospheres, so we need to use the r with the same unit, 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. Now we can plug everything into the equation we rearranged. Keep in mind that we must convert the temperature in Celsius to Kelvin. 10 degrees Celsius is 283.15 Kelvin. Once we multiply and divide everything, we get that there are 0.944 moles of gas in our tire. How many moles of nitrogen gas are in the tire? Nitrogen and oxygen are both ideal gases, so they contribute the same to the pressure. So 80% of 0.944 moles means that there are 0.755 moles of nitrogen gas in the tires. That leaves 0.189 moles of oxygen gas too. This speaker has all of the information that we'd need to solve any number of problems that we could be asked about this tire. For example, what's the maximum number of moles of methane that can be burned using the oxygen in the tire? The reaction is this. As always, the first step is to draw our beaker, which we did. Awesome. Step two is to figure out what change will happen. We know that. We were just told this information. So now we can solve. There are 0.189 moles of oxygen in the beaker, and one mole of methane reacts for every two moles of oxygen reacting. That means that 0.0945 moles of methane can be burned using the air in the tire. So always remember, step one is to draw a beaker or a container with moles of the contents.